And to wrap up this conversation about heparin and lovenox, I want to talk about heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. That's an unintended consequence where patients will have a drop in their platelet count, otherwise known as thrombocytopenia, in response to receiving a heparin product. So that can either be heparin itself or low molecular weight heparin, otherwise known as lovenox. So heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or HIT as we call it, is a result of heparin binding with platelet factor 4, which causes an immune response reaction and causes antibodies. These antibodies cause platelet activation, which leads to clots, and these clots can either be arterial or venous, which can lead to DVTs, pulmonary embolisms, and also increase the risk of heart, heart attacks and stroke. HIT can be categorized into two types. Type 1 HIT is a transient and very low drop in platelets within the first few days of heparin, and is usually self-resolving without much treatment changes needed. It's generally not associated with any increased risk of clot formation. Type 2 is a more serious HIT type, and this usually co comes several days after starting heparin. The platelets drop much more precipitously, and patients are at a much higher risk for clot formation. The 4T test is a clinical assessment test to see what the likelihood is that your patient developed HIT. There are four components to this test, the first one being thrombocytopenia, so the greater the drop in platelets, the more points you get towards the score. The second part is the timing of the thrombocytopenia. So the closer that you are to the initiation of heparin, when you start to see a platelet drop, the higher likelihood there is that this patient has hit. The third component to the score is thrombosis. So if your patient has any indication or signs and symptoms of having a clot, this would increase your score and increase the likelihood of hit. And the last component of this is looking for any alternative causes of thrombocytopenia. If this is negative, then that points you in the direction of hit as well and increases the score and the likelihood of hit. In terms of the scoring, zero to three points puts you at a low probability risk for HIT. Four to five points puts you at an intermediate probability, and six to eight points puts you at a high probability for having HIT. Ultimately, you'll need laboratory testing to confirm the diagnosis of HIT. So if you do a serotonin release assay, you're looking for HIT positive antibodies, which would then confirm your diagnosis of HIT. If your patient does have HIT, you're obviously going to want to avoid heparin products, so that's lovenox and heparin, and you can use something that we call direct thrombin inhibitors. So argatroban or bivorudin are going to be our two options that we use. Typically, I've seen argatroban used more commonly and bivorudin used more in the procedural world.